Merry Christmas guys and welcome back to a new video. In the last video, we learned how to create a target server. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to identify who is calling the API. So in RPG, API are published in the form of products and consumed by applications. So uh, we will learn how to create an application to consume the API. So again, in this tutorial, we will learn how to create a product, a developer, as well as the application. And we will use the app credentials to successfully call the proxy. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys. So now let's just click on this one. So we've been working on the Swagger Pet Store for a while now. And let's just continue using this one. So the first step that we are going to do, uh, we will need to create a verified API key policy to our proxy. And before getting into that, let's now just try to save this as a new revision because we don't want to mess up with the version 2. So now let's just um, try to deploy this in the test environment. Deploy. All right, now it's deployed successfully. Click on the um, develop tab. And right here on the uh, preflow, uh, under the proxy endpoint, just click on this one. And now we will be able to add this uh, plus step as you can see here. Just click on that one and try to look for the verify API key. So once we click on this one, you can see that um, it just show that this is the default um, display name and name here as well. So what I want to do, I just want to keep it as verified API key just like this without space and click on the add button. All right, so now as you can see that the proxy is created here. Okay, so here you can see that the display name is exactly the name that we just um, modify. And here in the API key ref, um, it say here request.query param dot API key. So what are we going to do? We going to replace this uh, middle query, uh, which is the query param to header. So by doing so, it means that it requires the API key to be entered in the header whenever calling the uh, API endpoint. Okay, so now uh, we change this and next just click on the save button. Just to show you that whether this is actually working, I will just uh, test this endpoint for you guys to see. All right, so now um, this is the uh, basically where we can just test our endpoint by adding the header here as well. It's uh, exactly the same as the postman. If uh, you ever use that, you can just um, use that one. But for this purpose, I'm going to use the uh, RPG product where we can just do the exact same thing. Okay, so um, now let me just try to go back to the overview for now. And I'm going to copy this URL and try to put it right here. All right. So now um, I don't actually want to put anything. I just want to directly click on this uh, to the send button. And here we can see that it's failed to resolve the API key uh, with this request and meaning that we will need to add the API as the header. Okay, so it's called API key and I just do uh, maybe just whatever the value is, test one, two, three, and click on the send button again. And right here, you can see that it say that it is an invalid API key. So that means we will need to create the product, a developer, and the application. Okay, so um, before getting into that, let me just quickly show you uh, again real quick with the thread. So I'm going to start trace new sessions and just click on the send button. And right here, we can see that it show us uh, 401. It means that it is uh, not authorized to access this URL at all. It requires the API key. Okay, so now let me just click on this AP, uh, verify API key and I'm going to uncheck this one. So right here, 
we can see that uh, this is the field request header dot API key because we haven't provided anything yet. Let me just um, try to uh, start a new thread session, and this time I'm going to use this one, uh, the RPG uh, with this API key with this uh, random value added here. And let me just uh, click on the send button again. So now let's just go back and click on this verify API key. This time, you can see that the um, request header API, we receive the uh, API key right here. So um, meaning that we good to go. So the next step I want to show you is to create a product. So to create a product, we first need to go to the publish. And I can just click on this for now. Just go to the API products. All right, so now we can just click here to create a new one. And we're just going to give this a name. So I'm going to give this as retail uh, because currently the API that we are using, the pet store, is actually the retail with say like in the inventory and stuff. So again, this one will be the retail again. Description, I want to call this as retail APIs. And the environment here should be test. So the access, um, there are a few options here. So this is the private is only visible to the external with the explicit permission during the app registration. And this is for the any register uh, developer during the app registration. And the other one here, this is for the uh, current organization uh, during the app registration. So we're going to go with the public one. And this one, just make sure that we're going to select the automatically approved uh, access request because um, to do that, we don't need to manually uh, approve it whenever there's like a new request. So just select this one as well. And this should be fine. Okay, just scroll down a little bit. Um, right here, it does require that we will need to add the proxy as well. So here we have this in the previous tutorial we created. So select the Svega Pet Store and click on the Add button. And we can also see the uh, following path that can be accessed, which is the Svega uh, Dust Pet Store here as well. All right, so now we want to save this. So we can just click on the Save button. All right, so that means that we have um, successfully create our product, API product right here called Retail. And the next one, we will need to create a developer. So to create a developer, just again under the Publish. Here, Developer, just click on this one right here. Next step, just click on the Developer and just give a name. I'm going to give it my name, Hong Li. Username, just do Hong Li. And contact at honglitech.com and click on the Create button. All right, so to create a developer, it's quite simple, as seen like this. And the next step I want to show you is to create an application. Again, under the Publish, right here, under the uh, Developers, there's an app, just click on the apps. Next to create, just click on the create. And right here, I can just call it as the retail app or probably retail pet store should be fine as well. Okay, let me just do it like this. And we can select the um, developer right here. Now we need to uh, search for the one that I just created, which is Hongli right here. So once we have this, let's just scroll down. And right here, we need to add at least one product. So at least one product is required, and which is right here, the product that we just created, which is called Retail. Now we can just click on here, and uh, we can see that the status is approved. Okay. 
So next, we just need to click on the create button. All right. So now we can see that um, there's a key generated. One is the key, and right here, this is the secret. And it is very important. We, uh, I want to show you the secret for now. Let's just uh, copy this because we will use this in this um, API REST client here. Okay, so I already copy this one. The next step is, which is the basically the final step, is to test the API with the newly created API key just to see whether it is actually working. Okay, so now let's just head back here. And this is the endpoint inventory, all right. And the API key, which is the one that I just copy. So paste it here. And before that, let's just uh, try to start the thread session before we hit the uh, send button. So you might be wondering why can't I just directly use it right here? The thing is that uh, we don't have the option to add the header key here in this uh, thread window. So that means we need to use this one or you can use the post uh, man as well. Okay. So now let me just try to uh, click on the send button. And here it is. Uh, we can now see that we get the response from hitting this by adding the API key which is generated by RPG. All right. So that means it uh, working. So again, let me just click on this uh, API. Uh, verify API key uh, policy we just created and just to show you right here this is the request dot header dot API key uh, with the value that we just enter it which is right here and you can see that it does require the API key to be uh, successfully uh, called this endpoint and if I just add something else or maybe just uh, say I'm going to remove one and add the other one and try to hit this send button. You can see that the uh, API key is invalid in this case. So that uh, pretty much how we create verify API key to the current proxy. We learn how to create the um, product and we also create the developer creating an application. Uh, finally, we just uh, test the API with the newly created API key to see whether it's working or not. So that's the step we gone through so far in this tutorial. And we are able to identify who is calling the API. And if you have any question, just let me know in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to like this video and see you guys in the next video.